Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. In the last video, we talked about clustering algorithms. This time, we are going through a simple use case using those algorithms. Let's say we are working for the city of Chicago and we are looking for ways to improve the quality of life of our citizens. In this particular case, we are wondering if we can reduce the number of accidents in our roads. We could go into a lot of details to differentiate between all sorts of accidents. We'll keep it simple and start with questions like, where are the accidents in the Chicago area? Where should we prioritize our efforts? These are general questions that will need to be refined. Let's get into a notebook. I am using the IBM Watson Studio environment to run my notebook. If you are interested, you can find a link in the description on how to create a free account on that platform. Links to the notebook I'm using here are also available in the description. The first thing we want to do is to read the accidents data from the city of Chicago. We read the last six months of data from January 15, 2021 for a total of over 48,000 records, each with 49 attributes. We are not using all these attributes, so we trim them down to four attributes. We also create additional data frames for accidents with injuries and fatalities. We then remove the accidents that don't have longitude and latitude, just to remind us that data cleansing is always important. The first thing we do is get a visual representation of the accidents to get a better feel for what we have. For this, we create two scatter plots, one representing all the accidents and the other one color-coded with types of accidents. Note that these scatter plots are not maps. Still, because of the large number of accidents, despite the pandemic, we can get an impression of the roads around Chicago. Already, we see that there appears to be more accidents in places like Chicago downtown and around the Chicago O'Hare Airport. When we look only at injuries and fatalities, we see that the accidents are still all over the place, but of course, there are less of them. Let's see if we can cluster our data using k-means. We make the decision to use the accidents with fatalities. The first step is to decide how many clusters we want to use. For this, we use the elbow method. Based on the diagram, we pick 20 clusters. We could have picked fewer or a few more as long as it is in the elbow area. Let's see how these clusters look on a map. Each cluster has few accidents, but covers quite a bit of ground. We can take k-mean one step further. Let's add the injuries accidents in the mix, but add weights to the clustering. We give the accidents with fatalities a weight of 10, and the ones with injuries a weight of 1. We could have decided to multiply the number of fatalities and injuries by these constant to better assign importance to each accident. Here, we see the elbow diagram from 20 to 500 clusters with a step of 10. We could go further with k-means, but since k-means is not the optimal approach for this problem, we'll stop here. The next clustering algorithm we are trying is the agglomerative clustering algorithm. This time, instead of building the cluster top-down, we are building it bottom-up. We could ask for a specific number of clusters, but by specifying none, we can then get the entire hierarchy. Here we see what's called a dendrogram that shows how the clustering was built toward the top of the hierarchy. The end result is somewhat similar to k-means once we decide on how many clusters we want to use. Let's leave it at that and move on to the next approach. The next approach is interesting since it takes into consideration the density of the clusters. DBSCAN stands for density-based spatial clustering. In this case, we'll use all the accidents, we made the following additional decisions. We decided that the accident must be roughly within the distance represented by the size of an intersection. A street is, on average, 30 feet wide. Since we're dealing with longitude and latitude, we use a notebook from video 45 to calculate that a distance between 40 and 54 feet is 0 0.00015 when expressed in longitude and latitude. The second decision is that based on our current data sets, we should have at least 18 accidents in each cluster. We arrived at this value through multiple tries. The result is that we get 33 clusters 
and we were able to eliminate over 47,000 accidents as noise to be able to get the clusters. We could display all the clusters on a map and then drill down on each to decide what to do. Instead, we ordered our clusters by number of accidents and displayed the top 20. This gives us a better idea on where we should focus. We made a few decisions in the context of this simple example. We used six months of data. We really only considered the locations of the accidents. We tried k-means on accident with fatalities and then with fatalities and injuries. We used the entire dataset to find the DB scan clusters. Other questions could be raised. Should we use one year of data instead? Should we cluster by month? This could lead to other insights. Should we analyze by day of the week or hour of the day? Should we use additional attributes such as speed limit, weather conditions? Some additional insights could lead to different solutions and different cluster priorities. In the next video, we'll explore the dbscan algorithm a little further. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science, and don't forget to subscribe.